Now the fungi, the second group. Fungi are the heterotrophs. That is, they need organic carbon source as their food material, um, and uh, uh, they have to. They they are not able to convert the sunlight into uh, energy or food. Fungi are also very widely distributed, present almost in all types of habitats. Their sizes ranges from microscopic fungi to very large ones. Microscopic fungi, for example, yeast. We commonly use yeast in our uh, baking products. Whenever we bake, we use yeast. Yeast is a microscopic single cellular fungus. There are very large uh, fungi. For example, there are very large and huge mushrooms. We know that. Uh, they are sometimes, uh, and, and mushrooms, we know that these are the edible materials, but not all mushrooms are edible. Uh, some mushrooms are very large. These are the heterotrophs. These are the symbionts, and these are the parasites. Heterotrophs, that is, they need their food material um, from producers, that is, from the organic source. They are symbionts. Usually, they make a symbiotic relationship, that is, a relationship of give and take with some other organisms. For example, there are some fungi which lives on the roots of plants or some uh, other parts of, uh, say, large trees, and they help those plants in absorbing materials from the surrounding soil, and from the plants they get their uh, some parts of the food. They make a symbiotic relationship with uh, many other kinds of organisms, particularly uh, trees, that is, and plants and the algae. Many fungi are parasites. They also live as parasites. That is, they live inside or they live outside of uh, the body of uh, animals and plants, and uh, they can sometimes produce disease in those animals and plants. Now we talk about some distinguishing features of fungi. Fungi are from unicellular to multicellular. As we previously mentioned, yeast is a unicellular fungus. We can see the bread molds. There are some, uh, sometimes if we place our bread for long, longer time in uh, outside the refrigerator, for example, in a room temperature, then we see that greenish or brownish material grows on it. These are the bread molds, the fungi, which grow upon that bread. Here some part is um, penetrated inside the bread and some other part is uh, present outside that bread uh, and we can see a greenish rust or mass on the bread. They can also grow on uh, uh, other materials like different types of fruits. Um, so fungi may be microscopic unicellular and fungi may be macroscopic, multicellular, larger organisms. The body of the fungi made up of filamentous material. Their body consists, except for some unicellular fungi like yeast, body of the most of the fungi consists of long tubular filament, that is long tube-like filaments, which sometimes may be septate, that is they have septa divisions in them, Sometimes they are non-septate, that is, they do not have any divisions in them. Sometimes they are uninucleated, sometimes they are multinucleated, that is, some have a single nucleus, some have more than one nuclei. So, the fungi are categorized into a different kingdom. We know that the organisms are uh, in, on the planet Earth are classified into five kingdoms. Fungi makes a separate kingdom among the organisms, which is called the kingdom fungi. Fungi have a specific body if they are not unicellular, they are multicellular, which makes a filamentous appearance, that is, their body consists of filaments. These filaments are typically called hyphae. When, the, there, when there is a group of hyphae um, present together uh, in an area, maybe in the soil, maybe in the, uh, organ in the 
say root of a plant, the collection of hyphae is called mycelium, which makes the body of the fungus. They reproduce, the fungi, they reproduce both by sexual and asexual means. Normally, they reproduce by asexual means. As we know that they are eukaryotes, they carry out, photos uh, they carry out um, uh, mitosis to um, produce their young ones, that is the next generation. But sometimes they also sexually reproduce um, and uh, their life cycle consists of some in part um, asexual reproduction and in part the sexual reproduction. We have a look on uh, their life cycle in a diagram. If you look at the diagram, there are two cycles which are running side by side. Here n means the haploid or the half number of chromosomes and 2n means diploid or the double number of chromosomes. If we look at the, the side of asexual reproduction as they are labeled, then we can see that after germination of the spores, they produces mycelium. That is body of fungi as we previously described that consist of various hyphae. This is this have n number of chromosomes that is half number of chromosomes and they live, they live like this um, for for a longer period of their life. Then these mycelia they produce spores uh, uh, and for production of the spores they produce some spore producing structures. These spore producing structures also have n number of chromosomes that is half number of chromosomes. These structures then produce spores, those spores germinate to make the mycelia again. So this asexual reproduction life cycle is a, a life cycle which in which all the organisms that is all the forms of um, that particular fungus are um, haploid that is they have a half number of chromosomes but they can enter into uh, the sexual reproduction sometimes whenever it is required by the environmental conditions. What happened that um, we call this process a plasmogamy that is the cytoplasm of two cells is fused. Um, the filaments they uh, comes together in specific area and the filaments of opposite mating types they produces fusion tubes with the help of uh, these fusion tubes their plasma that is the cellular plasma um, they fuses we call it plasmogamy when the um, uh, plasmogamy occur then that particular cell have two nuclei one from one cell and one from the other cell we call it a dikaryotic stage that is there are two nuclei present inside the cell um, and both are haploid both have n number of chromosomes after some time karyogamy occur karyogamy means we, we know that karyo word means that something related to nucleus after some times karyogamy occur um, and the result is the karyogamy means that the both the nuclei which are haploid present in that cytoplasm they are fused when they are fused uh, they make a diploid uh, nucleus which have two n number of chromosomes that is a um, say otherwise normal number of chromosomes though we know that most of the part of their life the fungi uh, lives in a haploid form then uh, whenever the favorable conditions come uh, the uh, the these uh, these uh, diploid stage um, consists which have two n number of chromosomes carry out meiosis and they again produce some spore producing structures and because in this diploid stage meiosis occur we know that the result of meiosis are um, uh, the cells which have a half number of chromosomes in each nucleus so the spore producing structures because they are produced by the me uh, meiosis in the diploid stage so they have a half number of chromosomes and when they make spores these spores also have a half number of chromosomes these spores again germinate to form the mycelia that is body of the fungus. So this is how um, a fungus carry out its life cycle.